What's up guys, it's Brad from Light Architect. As some of you know, if you watch this channel, I work as a cinematographer in addition to my visual effects generalist work. And while many artists work exclusive in either of these fields, the worlds of visual effects and live action cinematography are becoming increasingly linked. Because of this, I've found that both my work as a cinematographer and 3D visual effects artist have complemented each other in unique ways. In this video, I'm going to share three ways how my knowledge from cinematography made me a better 3D artist and how my knowledge as a visual effects generalist made me a better cinematographer. The 3D visual effects world and live action cinematography have their differences, but a lot of aspects in live action cinematography have their counterparts in the world of 3D. As the world of 3D visual effects contains its own virtual lights and cameras, often based in real world settings. The key is finding how these two fields complement each other and understanding their corresponding limitations. When I started learning visual effects as a hobbyist years ago, I had limited knowledge on how light interacted in the world. As soon as I started understanding key lighting concepts through studying cinematography, two things happened. Both my ability to integrate CG elements with live action, in addition to my ability to create more interesting full CG renders, went up significantly. As a cinematographer, you're constantly learning new ways to light a scene for the story and to create visual interest. In live action cinematography, we utilize physical lights on stands or overhead rigging to light a scene in order to fit the intended mood of the film. We can change the quality, quantity, color, and direction of the light source with various grip equipment to drastically change the look and mood of the scene. In the world of 3D virtual cinematography, these skills carry over, but with two key differences that I have noticed. In the world of 3D cinematographer, you don't have to worry about seeing the light source or stand itself within the shot, as it is essentially a transparent 3D object in the scene emitting light in a certain way based on the user's preferences. Additionally, you don't have to use grip equipment to change the quality of the light source, but instead all the qualities of the light are within the digital light source settings itself. For example, in live action cinematography, if we want a light source to be softer on our subject, we will often put diffusion frames in front of the light source in order to create less harsh shadows. However, in the world of virtual cinematography, to make a softer area light, all we have to do is increase the source size within the 3D world. We can also change the color, control the emission amount, and change the beam spread angle with the click of a button. These are generally more difficult to deal with in the world of live action cinematography, as there are more limitations. Despite the differences in these two worlds, the visual language of lighting and imagery remains the same. Various lighting techniques such as three-point lighting, depth through light and shadow, and contrast ratios on characters in the scene create visual interest and provide specific feeling for the viewer. When I first got into 3D work, I would frequently be confused on how I would get my renders to look and feel a certain way. Lighting is a key aspect of creating interesting visuals, and after understanding a few basic concepts from cinematography, my render's artistic quality and mood drastically changed. Conversely, experimenting with lighting in a 3D scene often sparked ideas for what kind of lighting techniques I could utilize on a live action movie set, allowing me to creatively brainstorm within the computer without increasing the full production crew's valuable time on set. If I have an idea that I'm not sure about, I can experiment within the computer to see how it will look generally. Understanding lighting and cinematography also helped me as a visual effects artist when combining CG with live action footage. As VFX artists, we often need to replicate and match the lighting conditions of the live action footage when integrating CG elements. Having knowledge of lighting techniques better allows us to accurately recreate the lighting in virtual environments and ensure seamless integration with the original footage. The second way my knowledge from cinematography and visual effects complemented each other is by understanding emotional storytelling through camera movement. In live action cinematography, oftentimes we want a handheld or organic feel for the camera movement in order to create more tension or chaos within the scene. In the world of virtual cinematography, we can use a noise modifier on the digital camera's various position data in order to recreate this handheld feeling. Furthermore, we can experiment in the 3D world with digital focal lengths and apertures to create more interesting and photographic looking imagery that corresponds to real world photography. Finally, the third way my knowledge as both a cinematographer and visual effects generalist have complemented each other is by providing me with the knowledge of post-production visual effects workflows while I'm filming a movie in a live action environment. Adding various visual effects is becoming increasingly common in even lower budget productions that might not always have a visual effects supervisor on set. Having knowledge of how difficult certain effects will be in post-production can facilitate helpful conversation with the director or producer to make sure that the film is shot in a way that is more conducive to a visual effects process that saves time and money. For example, just knowing some basic knowledge about camera tracking can help determine whether or not a certain shot needs tracking markers added, and knowing some basics about post-production lighting can help decide whether or not a practical light gag is needed for a live action shot that is going to have added effects in addition to any CG relighting that might be added. Anyways guys, that's it for this video. I hope it was helpful. As always, feel free to leave a comment if you have any questions or suggestions in the comment section below. Subscribe if you're interested in more visual effects and filmmaking content, and I'll see you next time.